Hello, I'm Reverend Mike Retton with the Bowman Charge of the United Methodist Church located in Bowman, South Carolina. Uh, it's been kind of one of those muggy, hot weeks, but then this is August in South Carolina, so that can be expected. I hope you've had a good week, and I thank you for tuning in to this channel and listening to what I'm prepared for uh, the sermon for tomorrow, and that I'll be preaching in all three of my churches. So let's start with a moment of prayer. Almighty God, as you have sent Jesus to be for us light and truth, send now your Spirit upon us to grant us grace and strength to follow in his footsteps this day and always. We ask these things and pray this prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. If you've been tuning in, you know that I have been working my way through the Sermon on the Mount. Um, I've preached on various parts of it in the past in my ministerial career, but this is the first time that I've actually decided to follow it from beginning to end and just take various sections of it, dissect it, and look at it a little bit closer. So that's where we are now. And so right now, this sermon is on the scripture reading from Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. So again, that's Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. Now here now the inspired, inerrant word of God. Jesus, of course, is preaching, and he says the following, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. This is the word of God, for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Again, that was Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14, and I've titled my entire series, God's Blessing, and this happens to be part 11. Earlier in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus warned us about the dangers that we would encounter when we begin our journey in real religion. Many of those dangers are from within us, simply because of our natural sinful nature. Yet we also fall victim from outside influences, such as following the poor example of others, listening to poor advice, and that natural curiosity about those things that are called forbidden. Wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. Here Jesus has just described the characteristics of the road to hell. Narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. Here Jesus describes the central characteristics on the way to get to heaven. Finally, Jesus tells us that there are few who find it, meaning that few will find the way that leads to eternal life in heaven. Let's examine these two roads a little bit closer. First, there's the wide gate and the wide, easy road. Jesus tells us that this is the road that most people choose and that there's always a huge number of folks traveling on that road. The wide gate allows many people to enter at once. There's no pushing or shoving to get in. If there were a sign above the gate, I'm sure it would read something like, We're open! Come on in! Despite Jesus' warning that this gate and path leads to destruction, many ignore the warning and simply follow the crowd. In his sermon on our text, Wesley stated, quote, The gate to hell is sin, and the road to hell is wickedness. How wide a gate to hell is the gate of sin. How broad the way to hell is the way of wickedness, end quote. A little bit later in his sermon, Wesley goes on to say, quote, our basic sin is the mind that is set on the flesh and love of the world, end quote. How true that is. 
Open your eyes. Look around you. Do you see everyone talking about and expressing the love of God? Do you see love your neighbor anywhere? The answer is no. From the time that we leave home and venture out on our own, we're taught to look out for number one because nobody else will. Once we enter the workforce, we soon realize that nobody follows the golden rule of do unto others as you would have them do unto you. No, the world teaches do unto others before they do unto you. The world teaches that's how to get ahead. That's how you survive. The people who travel this wide, easy road are full of pride, greed, and anger and they tend to throw caution to the wind. They seek fame and fortune, and they don't care how they go about getting it or what they have to do to achieve it. They seek power over others. Just look at the news in the last few months. How many politicians are making mandates for we the people, but break their own rules? It's the okay for thee, but not for me, attitude. Over the last few years, we've seen several examples of where one set of rules applies to one set of people, while another different set of rules applies to a whole different group of people. Nobody seems to want to be held accountable for their actions anymore. They claim their actions are a result of society, the actions of others, or the fact that they were raised poor and didn't have a chance to get ahead in this world. The truth of the matter is, too many people are looking for the easy life. They don't want to work to make themselves better. Far too many teens have seen that they can make thousands of dollars in a week by selling drugs rather than putting in a 40-hour work week. Despite the rise in the number of shootings and killings by gangs, many of these teens want to live that lifestyle simply because it gives them a sense of belonging to a part of something bigger than themselves, a sense of belonging. I believe the reason so many people are drawn to this lifestyle is because of the music that teen teens listen to today. Most rap music idolizes gangs, drugs, and sex, and power. Hollywood is just as guilty. Movies show that the bad guy doesn't always get caught. Many movies idolize sex, drugs, and guns, and the people who use them. Gone are the days where good always triumphs over evil, and where the good guy always gets the girl, and they ride off into the sunset together. There's also the influence of Black Lives Matter, wokeness, cancel culture, and what people mistakenly claim is white supremacy. I grew up in the 1960s when our culture first started to change. Our moral standards were chipped away a little at a time until they arrived to where we are today. Yes, many are traveling on that wide, easy road, following the rest of the crowd. As Jesus teaches, that's the road that will lead to destruction and eternity in hell. Then there's the other road, the one with a narrow gate and a road that's difficult to follow. This is a road less traveled. As Jesus said in our text, there are few who find it. There's a price to pay for traveling on this road, and most people aren't willing to pay it. The price could be summed up in one word, change. To enter the narrow gate and travel down the narrow, often turning, twisting road, requires one to change their entire being. One must change their heart and their way of thinking. 
Most people don't like change. They like to keep on keeping on. Living according to the standards of the world is an easy way of living. Simply go along with the crowd. After all, they can't all be wrong, can they? Living according to God's standards is downright difficult. As Christians, we're called to live our lives according to a much higher standards. To help us remember that we're supposed to change our way of thinking as well as our way of living, John Wesley came up with three simple rules for us to follow. Do no harm, do good, and stay in love with God. By following these three simple rules, we should be able to navigate that narrow, turning, twisting road, right? Yes, we should. However, we're human, and that means we're all sinners by nature. We're all going to stumble and fall from time to time. The good news, my friend, is that there's a guide traveling that road who will help us get back on our feet and back on the path. The guide's name is Jesus Christ. You've heard me say this time and time again. If you want to get to heaven, you have to have a personal relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Jesus himself tells us that this is true. His words are found in John chapter 14, verse 6, where he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. When Jesus appeared to his disciples in the upper room after his death and resurrection, he told those men that he would not abandon them, that they would receive a helper to guide them in their daily lives. We know from our study of Scripture that the Helper arrived on the day of Pentecost in the form of the Holy Spirit. Jesus paid for our sins on the cross. God raised him from the dead. After Jesus ascended to heaven, he sent us that Holy Spirit. When we acknowledge our sins, earnestly repent of those sins, and accept Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And it's the Holy Spirit who will guide us in our daily lives and keeps us on that narrow, twisting and turning, often difficult path that leads to eternal life. Praise be to the Lamb of God. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending us your Son, Jesus, and Jesus, we thank you so much for teaching us these very valuable life lessons. Life is not easy. The world wants us to conform to its ways, and we know that the devil, Satan, is in charge of this world. And that is why you sent your son Jesus to teach us and why Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to dwell within us, to remind us of his teachings, and to guide us in our daily lives. And so, Lord, if there's anybody who has not yet made that decision to acknowledge their sins, repent of those sins, and ask Jesus to take control of their life as their personal Lord and Savior, I ask that you send your Spirit to work with their spirit, because we know that you want all of us to accept your Son, Jesus Christ, as our Lord and Savior, and thus we will spend eternity in heaven with you. Lord, we thank you for the many blessings you have already bestowed upon each and one, every one of us, and we ask that you continue to watch over us, guide us, and direct us in our daily lives. All honor and glory belong to you. We ask these things and pray this prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Well, I hope you enjoyed the sermon. And uh, like I said, we're, we're getting down to uh, the end of the Sermon on the Mount before too much longer. So anyway, 
I hope that you will have a blessed day, a blessed week. And if you're not attending your church in Sunday mornings, then please remember to send in your tithes and your offerings to the church treasurer, the financial secretary, whoever is collecting the money. Don't forget about the Sunday school offering as well. So again, I thank you for tuning in. May God bless you and keep you in the coming week ahead. So let us have a word of prayer. He received the benediction. You've be re been reminded that Jesus Christ is your Lord and that you are God's servant. You are loved. You are forgiven. You are empowered. And now you are sent to live as God's faithful. Amen. Have a blessed week. And I'll see you all again next week via this channel.